Right now at noon, federal prosecutors will not bring civil rights charges against a New York City police officer in the 2014 chokehold death of Eric Gardner. And thousands of people from all across the globe are marking the anniversary of the Apollo 11 mission to the moon. We'll look back at the historic spaceflight. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now at Noon. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Mark Kane. Thanks for tuning in to News 3 Now. On this Tuesday afternoon, we'll get to those stories in just a bit. But first, let's head over to the Weather Center. Meteorologist Dave Caulfield. Another hot one out there. Yep, temperatures already into the lower to middle 80s. And with that humidity, it could feel like the mid 90s, even some upper 90s later this afternoon. On Doppler track, we're quiet across southern Wisconsin. We noticed some thunderstorm activity just to the north and west, uh, just crossing into southern Minnesota. I don't think we need to worry about thunderstorms until we get to later tonight as a cold front passes through. Madison on the Edgewater Sky Cam looking at partly sunny skies. A nice looking picture, but it's a little bit of a different story if you step outside. Temperatures are in the lower to middle 80s for most of us. Still some 70s closer to Lake Michigan. You factor in that humidity already feeling like 91 in Boscobel, 93 in Mineral Point. So temperatures and winds over the next 12 hours will be in the low 90s for highs once again for this Tuesday and then as we head into tonight we'll be falling through the 80s and 70s. We'll talk about when the core of this heat and humidity gets to southern Wisconsin in your first alert forecast. I was a little surprised this morning walking the dogs was a little, like a cool breeze. Yeah, not too bad. Not, but not uh, anymore. This, it sneaks up on you <laughs> for sure. <laughs> yes, it does. Right, we'll see you in a few minutes. Thank you, Dave. Officials with Madison's homeless shelters say they will not turn anyone away during this heat wave. Madison area homeless shelters have issued a weather exception due to extreme temperatures from Tuesday until July 22nd. Homeless shelters will not turn anyone away, even if they've already reached their limit on stays at the facility. Both Porchlight and the Salvation Army normally limit the number of stays to 90 days per calendar year. When that time expires, it's hopes that they will found housing or employment or something along those lines. Um, but if they do not, then they're not able to use the shelter facilities unless there's the heat exception night, which both shelters have done. On Monday, the number of people asking for a bed exceeded the number of spots available, so the local nonprofit Friends of State Street family quickly raised the funds to place 11 families in area hotels. A man is in custody in Sauk County after a disturbance caused Highway 136 to close for about two hours. The Sauk County Sheriff's Department says deputies went to a home on East Broadway Street in the village of Rock Springs around 1 a.m. for a report of a gun being fired during a disturbance. The victim ran from the home, but the suspect, 39-year-old Bradley Lewandowski, stayed inside. Emergency response teams and negotiation teams were called to the scene. Lewandowski Dowski was eventually arrested. The Wisconsin DOT says all lanes of the highway were closed in both directions between County Road DD in Rock Springs and County Road I north of North Freedom while the situation was being addressed. Democratic lawmakers are planning to tout a new bill that would dramatically rework how Wisconsin draws its legislative district boundaries. Republicans redrew the lines in 2011 to consolidate supporters, helping them maintain control of both houses since then. Democratic voters filed a federal lawsuit in 2015 alleging the boundaries were unconstitutional, but the U.S. Supreme Court ruled in June that gerrymandering claims don't belong in federal court. Two lawmakers introduced a bill a week before that ruling that would require the Legislative Reference Bureau to draw boundaries with legislative oversight. The bill has three Republican co-sponsors. Federal prosecutors will not bring civil rights charges against a New York City police officer in the 2014 chokehold death of Eric Gardner. Officials were attempting to arrest Gardner on charges that he sold loose, untaxed cigarettes outside a Staten Island convenience store. Gardner refused to be handcuffed and officers took him down. Gardner's dying words, I can't breathe, became a rallying cry for police reform activists. A state grand jury refused to indict officer Daniel Pantaleo, on criminal charges, chokeholds are banned under police policy. The medical examiner found a chokehold contributed to Gardner's death. This is an outrage, an insult to injury. You killed my son and you won't get away with it. I stood quietly by for five years. I'm not being quiet anymore. 
Mayor Bill de Blasio says it was a mistake for New York City to wait years for federal prosecutors to investigate the death of Eric Gardner before beginning disciplinary action against the officer accused of putting him in that fatal chokehold. However, de Blasio did not say whether the city intends to fire the officer. Greek police say a 27-year-old man is in custody and has confessed to the murder of an American scientist, Suzanne Eaton. Authorities say the suspect hit the 59-year-old twice with his car before sexually assaulting her and dumping her body in a cave in Crete. Greek officials told CBS News Eaton was suffocated, either strangled or smothered. Authorities are charging him with Eaton's murder. House Democrats say they plan a vote, possibly as early as today, on a resolution condemning some of President Trump's tweets. Natalie Brand has the details from Capitol Hill. President Trump is imploring Republicans not to vote on a House resolution condemning his recent tweets targeting four Democratic Congresswomen saying they should go back from where they came. Tuesday, he took to Twitter, again writing, those tweets were not racist. I don't have a racist bone in my body. The so-called vote to be taken is a Democrat con game. Republicans should not show weakness and fall into their trap. We have the responsibility to uphold the dignity of government. The resolution, quote, strongly condemns President Donald Trump's racist comments that have legitimized an increased fear and hatred of new Americans and people of color. He's launching a blatantly racist attack on four duly elected members of the United States of House of Representatives all of whom are women of color. The president appears to be making attacks on the progressive congresswoman known as the squad, a 2020 campaign issue. But not all Republicans see it as a winning strategy. We're going to have problems electorally down the line. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that's, that's one reason. But also, um, as I learned in kindergarten, you know, uh, treat people with respect, right? But even Republicans who disagree with the comments say they may not vote for the measure. Do you plan to vote on the resolution? I'll see what the resolution is, but I'm generally not that supportive, especially of a resolution going after another branch of government. But we'll see. House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy called the resolution, quote, a political stunt. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Capitol Hill. And President Trump tweeted out a quote from Leader McCarthy and thanked him for his support in voting against the resolution. Well, it was a half century ago today that three American astronauts took one giant leap for mankind launching on a trip to the moon. At the Kennedy Space Center this morning, visitors at launch pad 39A cheered at the precise moment Apollo 11 blasted off for the moon 50 years ago. On July 16, 1969, a Saturn V rocket carried three astronauts, Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins, on a 225,000-mile journey. Four days later, the lunar module touched down, and Armstrong became the first person to set foot on the moon. Their success expanded humanity's understanding of our celestial neighbor, and most importantly, it taught us something about ourselves, that together we can accomplish any goal. NASA has set its sights on returning to the moon. The project faces cost overruns and scheduled delays, but the goal is to have another man or woman walking on the moon by 2024. Quite a lot of memories there. Well, there's more to come on News 3 Now at noon. Up next, we'll see what Howard's working on in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. Today, we're using a few of summer's best veggies to whip up a dish that's restaurant special. It's so easy, you might feel guilty once you taste how good it is.
When it comes to making dinner this time of year, we look for ideas that are fresh and quick. And whenever possible, take advantage of our bounty of fresh veggies. With that in mind, I know you're gonna love today's light tasting pasta dish that's tossed with a confetti of roasted veggies. We start by cutting up a few plum tomatoes, some zucchini, summer squash, and an onion. All that goes into a bowl and gets tossed with some olive oil, garlic, salt and pepper. Next, we place our veggies on a rib baking sheet and into a hot oven they go until they're tender and the edges are brown. While they roast, we'll boil up some angel hair pasta and that can be regular or whole grain. Once our pasta is tender, we'll drain it, then we'll toss it with the roasted veggies and the pan drippings. A little fresh basil and a bit of grated Parmesan cheese, and it's time to dig in. Simple, yes. Fresh tasting, you bet. Budget friendly, of course it is. To get the easy recipe for our fresh garden pasta, simply visit our website. I'm Howard with Kelly, our resident pasta lover in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, where today we found a fresh from the garden way for you to say, ooh, it's so good. Uh-uh-uh. Delicious, resident mm. pasta lover. Thank you, Howard. There's more to come on New Street Now at noon. Up next, an alert day continues for the heat and humidity. Meteorologist Dave Caulfield has more in your first alert forecast. Retail sales beat expectations and astronauts may soon be gardening in space. Mark Liverman has more in today's Money Watch report. U.S. retail sales increased more than expected last month, a sign of strong consumer confidence. The Commerce Department says sales rose 0.4% in June, the fourth consecutive month of rising retail sales. 
Just in time for Prime Day, Amazon has another promotion for U.S. shoppers. If you let the company track the websites you visit, you'll earn $10. In order to get shopping credit, you have to install Amazon Assistant, a comparison shopping tool for your web browsers. Amazon says it can use this data to improve its general marketing products and services. IKEA is closing its only manufacturing site in the United States. The Swedish furniture company plans to shift operations to Europe, where it says production costs are lower. About 300 jobs will be cut when the company closes its Virginia facility in December. IKEA says moving the work to Europe and importing the goods will make its products more affordable in North America. And space food is about to get a lot spicier. Scientists at NASA have selected the Española chili pepper as the first crop to harvest in outer space. In their effort to send a person on the two-year journey to Mars, scientists are looking to incorporate freshly grown fruits and veggies into the astronaut's diet. The pepper is a good candidate because it can grow at a high altitude and in a dry climate. Plus, it's loaded with vitamin C to help combat health risks while in space. And that's your CBS Money Watch report. For more, head to cbsmoneywatch.com. At the New York Stock Exchange, I'm Mark Liverman. Mark, thank you. Let's check Wall Street at the noon hour. The Dow Industrial is down 46 points. The Nasdaq and S&P 500 also trading lower. Q106 Farm Director Pam Yaki is out of the radio barn today, so here are your farm numbers. Time now for the weather. Here's Dave Caulfield. Uh, did you know it's going to be hot, Mark? Really? Yeah. Didn't hear, didn't hot, hear that. Hot and humid, <laughs> in fact. Uh, um, this may be news for some of us, but for most of us, uh, we've been dealing with the heat and humidity for the past couple of days. Right now, temperatures are in the upper 70s and low 80s across southern Wisconsin, even some mid-80s north of Madison and across southwestern Wisconsin. When you factor in that humidity, it already feels like the 90s in Prairie du Chien and Basquiat, feeling like 87 in Lone Rock and 85 in Madison. So for the next 12 hours in Madison, we do have a chance of uh, feeling like the 90s as that heat and humidity really start to build during the mid-afternoon hours. We even could feel close to 100 degrees if we uh, get a little bit more sunshine, a little bit more humidity to build in, and then we will start to feel just a little bit better by the time we get to tonight, but really not by much. This heat wave continues to march on across southern Wisconsin Tuesday, Wednesday, and Sunday. So today, tomorrow, and Sunday, heat index values anywhere from about 90 95 to about 100, maybe even 105 in spots, hot and humid with temperatures in the low 90s. But really the core of this heat and humidity starts to uh, get here and really impact us for Thursday, Friday and Saturday. That is the hottest and most humid stretch of weather that is going to impact us on those days. Heat index values of the triple digits will be pretty common across southern Wisconsin. So that's the really dangerous heat that we're keeping a close eye on. Now, as far as air temperatures go, it, they correspond to those air temperatures uh, on Thursday and Friday with the hottest or, or the highest, I should say, heat index values as well. So that kind of makes sense. We're in the lower to middle 90s for Thursday, Friday and Saturday. It does look like, though, as we get to the end of July, some below normal temperatures could be on the way. So there is some relief in sight, just not for the next five to seven days or so. On Doppler track, we're quiet across southern Wisconsin. As far as rainfall goes, we are noticing some uh, clusters of thunderstorms off to the west. And really, I don't think we need to worry about any thunderstorms forming until we get to 
later on tonight. It's actually been a week in Madison since we've had any measurable rainfall. Platte Thunder Queenview Radio Skycam, partly sunny skies. Similar story on the WIC TV Skycam in Madison. So remember, when we talk about heat and humidity, we need to keep in mind that some of us could be dealing with some heat exhaustion, maybe even some heat stroke over the next couple of days. So it's important to know the signs, excessive sweating, nausea, feeling dizzy for heat exhaustion, heat stroke, rapid breathing, and you may actually lose consciousness. So really stay safe out there, try and stay cool, uh, and also stay hydrated, of course, this time of day. Future track showing uh, temperatures in the upper 80s and low 90s once again. I do think we have a chance of maybe seeing a few showers, maybe a thunderstorm tonight into tomorrow. We should be dry during the day on Wednesday, although a slight chance of showers and storms out there. Highs once again, the low 90s feeling like the mid to upper 90s and then a round of showers and storms possible early on Thursday before that heat and humidity really start to build in. So your 7 to 10 day forecast showing the hottest weather and the most humid weather on Thursday, Friday and Saturday. Then we do get a little bit cooler with some shower and thunderstorm chances on Sunday and Monday. And it does look like our long term forecast models bring below average temperatures for the last week of this month. And keep the water handy. Yes. All right. Thank you, Dave. Coming up on News 3 Now at noon, the Milwaukee Brewers are paying a special tribute to a fallen Milwaukee police officer. That story after this. He was very sick and in the hospital. Well, the Brewers paid a special tribute to Milwaukee police officer Matthew Rittner, who was killed in the line of duty last February. Mark McPherson has more. Brewers fans were brought to their feet Monday <laughs> as the team honored Matthew Rittner. To celebrate someone like that uh, who dedicates their life to serving others, I think it's a, it's a special tribute. It means a lot. Fellow Milwaukee police officer Derek Harris says Monday's honor comes at a time when the department needs it most. After last week's trial, uh, kind of reliving those uh, tragic moments over and over again to have uh, 
the Brewers just do such a kind thing. It means a lot to us. What's so proudly we have? Officers were on hand to sing the national anthem, and then Matthew's wife, Caroline, took the mound to throw out the first pitch. I think today meant a lot for her to actually come and be uh, surrounded by the tactical enforcement unit. I know she likes to come visit a lot, so anytime we can get the guys together, uh, she really enjoys it. The mound visit also brings back memories. The Rittners were married at Miller Park two years ago. Matthew threw out the first pitch that day. She started to get emotional, but to be happy at the same time, I think uh, it's just part of that healing process. It's really our honor to do this tonight. The Brewers also honored Rittner by giving Caroline the jersey that hung in the Brewers clubhouse during spring training. Not only was he part of this community, but a huge part of this community, but he was a big Brewer fan. You know, I think he would, uh, he would enjoy this. It's good to uh, bring something that was special to him and, and honor him in that place. A special tribute indeed. All right, Dave Caulfield, cooler weather on the way, right? In a yeah, couple of weeks? <laughs> next week, yeah. <laughs> Not for this week, though. We're still dealing with that heat and humidity. We noticed the partly sunny skies in Madison on the Edgewater Skycam, feeling like the mid to upper 80s, even some low 90s starting to show up across southern Wisconsin, southwestern Wisconsin to be more specific. This afternoon, I think temperature is once again close to 90 degrees, very warm and humid. Heat index values of 95 to 100 possible. All right, take it easy out there. We'll see you back here at 4. In the meantime, have a great afternoon.